What's up everybody? In today's tutorial I'm going to be talking about creating an organic animation of a stylized jellyfish-like creature with its tentacles floating around. Before starting I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers, old and new ones. If you haven't subscribed already please do it now, it really helps my channel to stay alive. Let's start creating the body of our creature. It's a normal sphere doesn't need to have too many subdivision. I'm going to select the bottom part and I'm going to create a vertex group and I call it jellyfish bottom and I call the sphere jellyfish body. I'm going to assign the selection to this group. I'm going to add a particle system. It's going to be hair. It's way too many. I need only eight. You can add as many as you want and I want them to grow so density from the bottom only. And here we have our simple shape. I'm going to make them longer, 10 for now, probably they were even longer. I'm gonna flag hair dynamics and we'll see that if we play right now, they will go down. Stiffness, I don't want any stiffness. So again, if we play now you'll see that our a bit smoother as I want each hair to be a bit less segmented I want to be a curve I'm going to change the number of steps up to 10 I would say it's fine then render two they should be 10 otherwise there will be a difference between the render and the viewport field weights I don't want the gravity to be too strong in fact especially if it's in water probably there's gonna be almost no gravity I will leave it a little bit maybe to add some randomness to the movement most likely the tentacles are lighter than, than the liquid they are in so they should not move too fast because of the gravity next define the simulation length I add 600 because I want the jellyfish to move around for a while if you click on advanced, you have another number of details that are about the velocity, so how they interact with the environment. I like to increase this a little bit. They will also get longer. It's like they will kind of stretch. We can add in physics some Brownian noise that it's going to make them a little bit more natural position instead of being straight in line. Also, another thing you want, probably, unless you want to start in this exact position, it's to come as they are here. You select the particle emitter, which is the body. You go in particle edit. And now you have a comb here and you can move them in the position you want. And I want them to be facing down. Next step is defining the path. We can already do some kind of simulation. For example, if we pick the body we have, we can first of all rotate that. And now from here, we can for example set a keyframe here. Then we go 10 seconds roughly. The animation and we move it here. And there is anything else in the scene. And now you can see that with the movement, the body is dragging these tentacles around. Maybe we can add another keyframe at around here. Let's see. The gravity makes this hair floating down in this case, depending on any force. If you add any other force, it can float in any other direction, like a turbulence, for example. But in our animation, it's important that when the velocity and the speed of the body change, the tentacles will react somehow. Okay, this is not the 
animation we want. This was just an example to show how this moves. So let's go back and let's create a path that we want our jellyfish to follow. I would go to the preferences. I would add add curve extra object, which adds some additional uh, curve type already shaped. Let's do a spiral, for example. We'll create it as a Bezier. We'll then go to set handle type automatic. In this way, it's even smoother. The next step, first of all, it's increasing the size and add some modifier as I don't want this to be flat completely. Do some simple deform. And we can have a path like this, for example. It's interesting. And then I'll add also another one, maybe on a different axis. Maybe on a Z axis, it looks better. Let's hide our jellyfish. Let's visualize only the curve. What we can do, it's animating the deformation too. Uh, let's do Z keyframe here. And we'll go to the end. And we'll do like that. Let's do the same for the other angle, insert keyframe, and then go here, and we'll change it all together. I really want to be crazy. We can rotate this too, press keyframe, insert keyframe, and then 600, and so now we have a shape that it's moving and also changing shape. Once we have our path and our jellyfish, we need to move the path where the jellyfish is. Something like so. We can see the direction is that way. The only thing left to do is selecting our jellyfish in object constraint, select the follow path, select our spiral, it's our path name, and click on animate path. At this point, our jellyfish will follow the path and is animation. And let's move to the color I used. Let's go to the render, create a world if you don't have it already. Background is going to be completely black. Then select a fish body and select new material. Let's go to emission so we can see what we're doing. I want the tentacles to be a different color than the body. One way to have two different colors is to hide the emitter and to create another object that you can shade in any way you want and then you can set the material for the tentacles but you can also achieve a similar result without adding additional material here is a very simple network emission i have a red for the body and the white for the tentacles if i move this course I will color more of the tentacles it's a gradient texture nothing major here of course you can also add all kind of effects like in Eevee you can add some bloom let's do something different with colors um, let's add the noise texture for example So let's activate the bloom. Or I should 
increase the size of our ball, of our body. And then I want the behavior of the tentacles to be a bit different. Let's get more, more of them, something like 20, for example. some object velocity, randomize that, some tangent speed too, let's go back to the spiral, I want the spiral to be always the side, therefore we can make the spiral smaller, don't forget to select follow curve because this will give the orientation and now that I have a texture I could see that the body wasn't following the rotation of the curve but now it looks so much better and I believe that it would benefit to have very very much longer tentacles Final step, render, to be fair I think the viewport result is good enough, just want some more bloom, we don't need ambient occlusion in this case, select your resolution, frame per second, I want the video, I want a quick time, and then I just have to add a camera. I want my camera to be in front of the main object. Let's see how it goes. Okay, let's clear the cache. Let's bake it so I can move it. I still don't like it. What we can do is reducing the length, but increasing the velocity. This way the tentacles should move a bit more following the movements. Last thing, it just render the animation. Hope you enjoyed this kind of abstract motion graphics experiment. Leave a comment below for any doubt or just to say hi. Ciao!